After a grueling march across the chaos-tainted wastes, with many desperate battles fought along the way, this Dawnbringer Crusade has at last reached its destination. Yet now they face their final and greatest challenge. During the night, their encampment is attacked by a numberless horde of the undead. The beleaguered Crusaders must survive the night and await the coming dawn to reclaim this land as their own. This battle is brought to you by our channel members and FLGS partners, Warpfire Minis and X-Planet. Today's battle report is meant to be a showcase of the new Cities of Sigmar units from the upcoming box set. Fielding 600 point armies, this game will use the matched play rules and the current General's Handbook. However, our Generals will be battling using a Path to Glory mission from the new Cities of Sigmar Battle Tome, called Await the Coming Dawn. This mission pits the defending Dawnbringer Crusade against a horde of enemies trying to overrun them and includes a number of special rules. First, there are no objectives in this mission, nor is there a game time limit. Victory can be achieved once dawn breaks, sometime after the third battle round. If either player has expelled all foes from the Dawnbringer territory at the end of any round, they will claim the major victory. The attacking force is also allowed to nominate any number of non-hero units as Horde units, and these units can return to battle at full strength each time they are destroyed, but do not qualify for contesting the Dawnbringer territory for the purpose of achieving or denying victory. We hope you enjoy this first look at the new Cities of Sigma set, and remember to tune in later this week as we look to release our first 2,000-point match exclusively for channel members. As the Crusades' forces are awoken and startled into action, their chosen battle tactic is magical domination. Caught unprepared, the Free Guild Marshal struggles to organize his troops, which is contrasted by the complete control the attacking Vampire Lord displays in commanding his undead forces. The Crusades' leaders begin preparing their orders, and the Marshal's Relic Envoy delivers a secret missive to the Cavaliers. Then, as the Free Guild Marshal finally collects himself, he prays to the God King and chants for Hammer of Sigmar. Concluding the hasty preparations, the Alchemite Warforger taps into the primal magics of Gur and casts blazing weapons, bolstering all those around him as they take up a defensive position. As the Vindicarum troops form their ranks and prepare for the enemy's assault, the Crusaders successfully complete their initial battle tactic. Eager to swarm and overrun the trespassers, the Soulblight Gravelord's battle tactic is intimidate the invaders. The Vampire Lord and Free Guild Marshal both fail heroic leadership. The Vampire Lord casts Mystic Shield and Hoarfrost on a unit of skeletons, granting their blades to rend. Ready to spring their trap, even more restless undead rise from the grave sites and surround the Crusaders. Revealing the order to countercharge, the Free Guild Cavaliers charge the skeletons and also gain an additional rend. After the newly arisen Graveguard make their long charge, the Vampire Lord grants the Crimson Feast to the skeletons, who attack first and take down two Free Guild Cavaliers. Surrounded, the Steel Helms fight desperately and while buoyed by their leaders, are able to fell a staggering eight Graveguard. Nearly decimated, the Graveguard retaliate and still take down four Steelhelms with their reprisal. The countercharging Cavaliers are last to fight, but completely trample the unit of skeletons. Then the Graveguard use inspiring presence. 
Despite reeling from the impassioned defense by the seemingly disorganized humans, the Soul Blight Gravelords are easily able to complete their battle tactic. Looking to regain the momentum of their assault, the Soul Blight battle tactic is led into the Maelstrom. The Vampire Lord uses their finest hour, while the Free Guild Marshal uses heroic leadership. Three Graveguard arise to fight again because of the Grave Lord's deadly invocation. Able to rally in combat hailing from Vindicarum, the Cavaliers return one warhorse and rider. Again looking to buff his minions, the Vampire Lord attempts to cast Hoarfrost but is unbound. Falling back to consolidate their forces, the Steel Helms redeploy and move five inches. The Vampire Lord again grants the Crimson Feast to a unit of skeletons, and the Steel Helms brace for impact with all-out defense, which also benefits the Cavaliers thanks to Hold the Line. The Graveguard begin the fighting, hacking through the Steel Helms defenses and taking out the rest of the unit. The Cavaliers fight next, dealing four damage to the Graveguard and six to the Skeletons. Finally ordaining to join the fight, the Vampire Lord attacks and takes down two Free Guild Cavaliers. Rounding out the combat, the Skeletons attack but deal no damage. Finding their footing and taking the fight back to the Crusaders, the Soul Blight Gravelords again complete their battle tactic. Worn down by the tides of undead, the cities of Sigmar battle tactic is led into the maelstrom. The Free Guild Marshal uses their finest hour, while the Vampire Lord and Relic Envoy both use heroic leadership. The Vindicarum forces again look to rally, this time returning two more Cavaliers. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Hoping for divine intervention, the Marshal regrettably fails his chant for Hammer of Sigmar. The Warforger expends the power of his runic crucible, bolstering the Crusaders' defenses. Hoping to push back the forces of death, the Free Guild Marshal orders the Steelhelms to engage the foe. Using all-out attack while holding the line alongside the Marshal, the Steelhelms fight the Vampire Lord, but only deal three damage to him. The Skeletons fight next and deal one damage to the Free Guild Marshal, then the Cavaliers take out the other unit of Skeletons. The Vampire Lord fights next, killing four Steelhelms and siphoning their life to restore his health. The Marshal is last to fight, but he confidently takes out the remaining Skeletons, then the Steelhelms use inspiring presence. Felling scores of skeletons, but unable to take down their warlord, the cities of Sigmar also complete another battle tactic. With the darkness of night enveloping and no sign of the dawn, the Soul Blight battle tactic is magical dominance. The Vampire Lord fails heroic leadership, while the Free Guild Marshal succeeds. Steadfast in their determination, the Steel Helms rally, and one man at arms rejoins the fight. The Vampire Lord casts Hoarfrost on himself and grants Rend 2 to his weapon. Shambling towards the Crusaders' encampment, the skeletons use at the double. Half a unit of skeletons return with endless legions, while the Graveguard are returned as a horde unit.
The Vampire Lord uses Crimson Feast on the Graveguard after another long charge, and they deal six damage to the Steel Helms. Standing alone, the Sergeant at Arms takes down one Graveguard, but is then slain by the Vampire Lord. Showcasing the eternality of undeath, the Grave Lords again complete their battle tactic. With no more achievable battle tactics, the cities of Sigmar must shift their focus solely to achieving victory. The Marshal and Vampire Lord both use heroic leadership, and the Envoy delivers a missive to the Cavaliers. The Cavaliers rally but return no models, while the Free Guild Marshal's prayer is answered as he chants for Hammer of Sigmar. Using primal magic, the Warforger casts blazing weapons and while the Vampire Lord matches his power, he cannot unbind the spell. Looking to avoid the Cavalier's trampling charge, the Graveguard redeploy, moving four inches. Deciding not to engage the Graveguard at all, the Cavaliers use all-out attack and take down the Vampire Lord. While hoping that cutting off the enemy force's head will lead to victory, Desperation grows as the cities of Sigmar fail their battle tactic. As dawn finally breaks across the battlefield, this may be the Crusaders' best shot at achieving victory. The Free Guild Marshal uses heroic leadership, and the Envoy sends a message to the Cavaliers. With orders prepared, the Marshal chants for Hammer of Sigmar, and the Warforger casts blazing weapons. With speed of dire necessity, the Free Guild Marshal issues the order to advance in formation. Heading the charge against the undead, the Cavaliers use all-out attack and eliminate both units of skeletons. With the Grave Lords having no eligible units to contest the Dawnbringer's territory, the Crusaders of the Cities of Sigmar establish control over this land and claim the major victory. We hope you enjoyed this first look at the new Cities of Sigmar. Don't forget to tune in later this week for our first full match as Sigmar's Crusaders face off against the Sylvaneth.